welcome. Scott here. Here is a quick boss guide for the upcoming Intersecting Wills event, play Bittersweet for me featuring the returning Kuja from Final Fantasy IX. The event synergy units are Kuja, Lion, Deuce, and Dark Knight Cecil. Kuja FR will be making its debut. Kuja will be getting his rework. We will be fighting two Krakens which has 100 million HP each. They are strongly resist all weapon types. The turn requirement is 65. The HP requirements is 10,000. Before I continue further, here is a small disclaimer clause for the video. The guide is written based on the time that the event was released for the Japanese version. Please do note that it is possible that the boss fight mechanics might differ when the actual event is released in global. Like most other Shinryu fights, the boss gains increased brave damage and gain resistances at start of the fight and 79% HP threshold. Bringing a support like Luna Freya, Sherlata, Aerith, Ramza, Yuna, Iroha, Pernello, Garnet, Selfa that grants damage boosting aura will make your fight easier. As the boss gains substantial boost to their defenses with the auras, it is important to inflict debuffs that lower their defenses. On the screen I have list down the key utility that you can consider when forming your party for this fight. Other than one particular mechanic, the fight is relatively an easy one. The bosses strongly resist all weapons damage. So the only way that you can bypass it is bringing elemental units or bringing party enchanters to bypass the resistances with elemental enchant and imperil. As the boss don't have native elemental weakness, do take note that you need inflict imperil debuffs. For this month's banner, other than Kuja, the other party enchanter is Ash. Throughout the fight, the boss will unbind and retract its tentacles during certain HP thresholds. During the unbind phase, the boss will counter with counter black ink cloud against any elements except for dark or holy element. The counter is a single target brave that inflicts two turns framed blind debuff that lowers your unit hit rate by 50%. Other than the counter mechanic during its unbind phase, the boss generally uses slowing blast and does AOE HP attack with group water. The key problematic mechanic in the fight is that you need to kill them both at the same time. If not, the surviving Kraken will revive the dead Kraken back to full HP with Arise. Arise will trigger on the immediate action after the Kraken is dead. This will trigger even during your burst or summon phase. In other words, don't kill the boss unless you are confident to kill both of them at the same time. Let's cover on the units that could help with the fight. As the boss doesn't counter other mechanics other than Dark or Holy, you can just simply bring Dark or Holy elemental units. Let's cover on the enchanter first. You can bring Xanda for dark enchant or shant auto if you have green her burst. For holy enchanters, other than Kuja, you can bring Minwyu, Ash, Yuri, Aiko, Sidor, or Paladin Cecil. Please be mindful that Ash is a dual enchanter. You can actually counter the boss counters with your own counter mechanics. Counter tanks like Orin, Galove, or Gladio will work well here. As you will want to kill both bosses together at the same team, bring AOE follow-up attackers like Sisnii, Yang, Cloud of Darkness, Kor, or the Dragoons Kane and Freya will help a lot here. You can also slowly drain the boss HP to a killable state with HP Poison effect. HP Poison won't kill the boss but they will assist a lot to lower the boss HP where you can kill them both off at the same time. Units with HP Poison in their kit are Dark Knight Cecil, X Death, and Alphanod. As there is an emphasis on killing both bosses at the same time, AoE Damage Specialist will be useful here. Other than Kuja, you can consider bringing Renoa, Strago, Yuna, the Twins Lon and Ren, Laguna or Squall. In JP there are a lot of solo runs like Celis, Beatrix, Sice, or Duo with Edge and Redia, most players use off-turn attack to charge up the force gauge HP damage bonus, before using a level 50 summon to nuke the boss for the kill. As we are no longer have Lufania plus fights, the boss guide will be focused primarily on Shinryu fights. In Shinryu, you need to understand the effects gained by the boss as the force gauge build up, its force ability and its force time effect. 
If you don't bring any force chargers, it is highly certain that the boss force gauge will build up faster than yours. To have a better understanding on the basics of the force gauge mechanics and Shinryu fights, I have done a video explaining the mechanics. I have included the link to the video under the comments and video description for your quick reference. Throughout the fight, the boss has a permanent force gauge properties that allows them to gain 70% brave resistance against non-elemental brave damage. The boss force gauge will build up faster as its HP is lowered. You can refer to the table on the screen for the percentages. At the 100% threshold, the Kraken boss will use its force ability, Group Water Got. The variant will change depending on the party you use. If your party has a character with a buff or special effect level greater than 4, the boss will use Group Water Got Plus as its force ability. If you don't meet the requirements, the boss will use Group Water Got Plus Plus instead. Both variant of the boss force ability, Group Water Ga Plus or Group Water Ga Plus Plus is a reset break status, AoE Brave Plus HP attack. The key difference between the two abilities is the type of buffs that the boss gains upon unleashing the force ability. Group Water Ga Plus will grant a 50% defense up buff for 5 turns. On top of the defense up buff. Group Water Ga Plus Plus will grants 80% HP and 80% Brave Damage Resist buff for 5 turns. Upon using the Force ability, the boss will enter into its Force time where the gauge will start to emit a red hue with a counter of 10 on its gauge. When the Force time is activated, the boss will gain the following enhancements where they are immune to KO. Unlike other fights, this condition could actually help to get both bosses to lower their HP to the same level before killing them off once the boss exit out of the force time. To deal force weakness on the boss, you need to use a force ability that deals holy weakness damage. Kuja, Ash, Yuri, and Sabin are some examples of holy FR. Alternatively, you can enchant holy on a character with non-elemental FR to meet the condition. Now let's go through the key mechanics of the fight. The boss has two phases, unbind phase where you will see the tentacles moving wildly. The boss will goes into unbind phase when their respective HP has dropped to 89%, 69% and 29%. They exit from the phase when its HP reached 79% and 39% HP threshold. In other word, the boss will be in unbind during the following HP threshold intervals. From the 89% to 80% HP threshold. From the 69% to 40% HP threshold. From the 29% HP threshold onwards. While in unbind phase, the boss will gain auras that raises its attack by 100% and further reduce brave damage resist by 50%. It will also inflict 5 turn 50% speed down debuff on all targets. The boss will enter into the counter mode where it will counter all elemental brave damage except for holy and dark with counter black ink cloud. They will exit from the phase temporarily at the 79% HP threshold and 39% HP threshold mark. Counter Black Ink Cloud is a counter mechanic that will trigger when the boss receives any elemental HP damage other holy or dark. The counter is single target magic brave attack and inflicts 2 turns framed blind debuff. Blind will reduces the unit's hit rate by 50%. You can counter this mechanic with your own counter. As mentioned earlier, it is important to kill both bosses at the same time. The boss will use Arise immediately after the next action that the Kraken is dead. Arise will result the revived Kraken restored back to full HP along with Shinryu Aura or any active force time mechanics where applicable. Do be warned that the Arise mechanic can trigger even during burst or summon phase. Triggering this will most probably prevent you from meeting the fight's turn requirements. The boss generally has two attacks. Slowing Blast is a single target brave attack that inflicts 50% speed down debuff for 5 turns. When the boss is targeting all, it means that the boss is likely to use Group Water which is an AoE brave plus HP attack. It will also grant the boss party 50% attack up. Before I end the fight mechanics, let's cover some tips. 1. 
bring a party of AoE damage dealers with AoE follow-up attackers like the Dragoons, Yang, Sisnii, or Cloud of Darkness. 2. The boss resists all weapons types. To bypass this, you need to bring an elemental enchanter. Do take note that the weapon resistance will only be removed upon you inflict the elemental weakness damage with the imperil. 3. Make use of the summon phase during the last few turns of the force time to nuke the boss HP down at the same time. 4. If you are enchanting your party with other elements other than holy or darkness, you can prevent the debuffs with debuff evasion call like Lena, use a cover tank like Gladio, evade the attacks with party evasion or block the debuffs with debuff mitigation call like Ragen LDCA or Reno LDCA. 5. You let the boss activate their force time so they gain KO immunity and slowly bring their HP down to 1%. Kill them off once their force time is over. Before I end the guide, let's cover a bit on the featured FR unit. Kuja is returning with a slight rework. He is a good magic DPS for big group of enemies. However, unlike Strago, Kuja didn't get a fair deal in his upgrades. His FR will raise HP damage up and max Brave Cap by 10% if your party is dealing Brave damage against multiple targets. Now let's briefly go through the Force condition. 1. Use a Holy Ability will grant 20% HP damage bonus. 2. Dealing Brave damage against multiple targets will give 30% for any ally and 50% for Kuja. All of Kuja's skills have means dealing Brave hits to multiple targets. For the others, you just need to pair him with AoE damage dealers like Yuna, Renoa, Squall, or Strago. Generally, when meeting all conditions Kuja can easily get 70% HP damage bonus while other units can get 50%. To be honest, this is really an underwhelming FR. With FR Echo on the horizon, I will find it hard to recommend people to invest in this FR unless you have abundance of resources or Kuja is a personal favorite. Let's hope that he gets a better upgrade in the future. This FR is useless against a single target boss. With this, I have come to the end of my boss guide presentation. Hopefully you find it useful. If you like the video, please give a like. Please subscribe to my channel for future gaming content. Good luck for the fight in the coming days. Bye.